What you're about to experience are my opinions and truths. I'm suggesting their possibilities for you to consider, in which you can then come up with your own logical conclusions. Welcome out, everyone, all of you great decoders around the world, wherever you may be, both male and female. My name is Logan, and this, of course, is Decode Your Reality, and today we're going to be breaking down and decoding MK Ultra. This will be MK Ultra Decoded. And I tried to do an intro that would kind of knock your socks off, kind of get you in the mood, kind of get you in the sense of what's going to take place during this decode. And ladies and gentlemen, the question that I'm going to present to all of you, do you think your mind's your own? And MK Ultra, obviously, when you go to the um, description of it, 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 it really existed. And they really did experiment on people. Well, I mean, the question is, do you think we're being experimented on as a species, as a whole, as mankind? And this is just a fractal down right here. Well, that's what I say. I say mankind is being used. We're all being experimented on. No one gets a hall pass. So it really starts with this guy right here, Sydney. He was in charge of the MK Ultra program. So I would ask the question to all of you watching this. Do you think this guy was being used? Is it possible that his mind was not his own and he, doesn't even, he didn't even know it back then? Well, that's what I say. I say the guy never knew that he was being used. All of these things, I mean, you know, j just the, the small subtleties that I look at when I decode. He died at the age of 80. 80 is the element Mercury. Mercury is 23, just like the word pineal gland. Mercury is the planet of communication. These celestials, the planetary bodies, the cosmos, that's what I say runs this reality. It micromanages, it role plays us. And this guy doesn't get a hall pass. I don't care how high up in the totem pole you think you are. It doesn't give you the exception from breaking free from being role played, especially in these governmental positions. So what was really interesting is where he got his start from. And I'm going to leave all these links in the description of this video so you can click on them for yourself. I'd highly suggest going and checking it out. But this guy right here, his first position was with the Department of Agriculture. And that's all I needed because I started to laugh because I, I knew what this meant. <laughs> Because whenever I see the agriculture, I know it's tied to the element cerium. We can bring alchemy into this. And this element is tied to the Roman goddess of agriculture. <laughs> 
So instantly and automatically, I knew, and this is the most abundant. The average is 140, but the most abundant is 141, and there's pi right there, and that's what we're all living out on Earth, and Earth is all about agriculture. <laughs> and 58, as most of you know, bam, it's the puppet master. 58. So the United States Department of Agriculture, I say, my opinion is, they're all being used. They're all being role-played to support that I'm going to look at the formation date, May 15th, 1862. What is the May 15th card? Well, it's the Four of Diamonds. And it's the 30th card in the deck. And just like that, we have a connecting point to support what I'm saying about mankind being used. We're being role played. Just like a simulation. We're living in a simulation, an experiment, the Truman Show. We'll be showing that as well. Make, make no mistake about it. So I go up here, and again, do you think this guy, his mind was his own? Absolutely. I say absolutely friggin' not. So many other subtleties. Born on the third, died on the seventh, 37's eye in the sky. 37 is shepherd. So many other clues to this. For that, for just starting off with a bang with this right here. This is his first position. I like looking at the origins of things. So the question I'm gonna, uh, that I'm going to ask all of you, multiple times throughout this presentation. Are you in control of your mind? Are we all being MK MKUltrad? <laughs> really? Are you in control of your mind? I know a lot of you say, absolutely, I'm in control of my mind. There's no way to prove that. Other than your opinion, and you say that you are. Other than my opinion, then I say you're not. But I'm going to support that through my presentation for this MK Ultra Decoded. Get yourself strapped in. Put on a pair of headphones, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be a gem of a decode. All right, so that was the intro. Let's go through the topics of conversation for this presentation. Number one, biological. Number two, call me Al. Number three, salt moon. Number four, our image. And number five, MK. So with that further ado, let's get into the first topic, which I've got to add the slip there, the biological. Well, here it is. So I started off with the, um, the actual declassified information for MKUltra. Going back over here and looking at it, here it is, and you can click on it, and these are declassified documents. But the big takeaway for this very first page that they're showing right there, and I'm going to bring it up and, and magnify it, it says that it's relating stimulus response in biological systems. That's what the body is. The entire body is a biological system. And this was really, really the takeoff for this presentation. So I decided, let's, let's look at what it means to be a biological system. This is what MKUltra is all about. The brain is part of the biological system. And just like that, doing the numerology, what does the science of numbers have to say about the biological system? It's a 51. And most of you should have the bells going off that have been paying attention to this research. There it is. It's tied to the element antimony. Antimony is tied to the all-seeing eye of Horus. And when you go to the meaning of it, from the Royal Society of Chemistry. Alchemy has everything to do with our reality, ladies and gentlemen. Well, a lot of these elements we take in, they're necessary. They're clues, bridges, but it comes from this Greek word, meaning not alone, anti-monos. And if you cut your brain in half, this is what you're gonna see. So the biological system, which is what it means to be a human being, involves this element, antimony, meaning not alone, and et cetera, et cetera. This is a big deal this right here just starting this presentation off but going a little bit further let's break down the word biological this is big because this is what mk ultra was wrapped all around affecting the biological system biological is the subject that we want to talk about here so breaking away the word system we have the number 31 with the biological this was absolutely huge and what I'm about to show you, ladies and gentlemen, doesn't get any more clear than that. Let's bring some pictures in this to kind of, you know, get an image in our minds of what this biological means through the tarot, how valuable the tarot is. 31st card in the deck using fool at zero and 22. Can do it both different ways. It's going to be the nine of wands. It can also be the 10 of wands as well if you remove that fool. So it's going to have a, a bridge. But this nine of wands is very interesting because if you realize what the human being experience is all about, it, it represents this card or this card represents the human being experience. This is the wounded warrior. 
the nine of wands and the wands means your mind and your mind would not be what it was without the body the body is the instrument of the mind the mind controls the body and so essentially this is the biological machine that we all call a human being and this card represents it perfectly this is like the old soul card been through many wars this is why he's got the bandage on his head if you go read about this card you can connect it to the human being experience describes it perfectly but this nine of wands came after looking over to your left side of the screen the nine of clubs the nine of clubs is the cards of illumination these cards 52 cards in a deck matching the 52 weeks of the year four suits four seasons 13 cards per suit matching the 13 weeks per season highly accurate as i've been showing many of you have been showing it the nine of clubs was the card that gave way to the nine of wands and the nine of clubs is the 22nd card in the deck and just like that we have our first big synchronization mk ultra mk ultra being a 22 the nine of clubs being the 22nd card in the deck and that gave to the 31st card in the deck and this was found from biological so you can see we do the round robin here and it's kind of undeniable here to me anyway but this is my support and how we're all under the guise of the mk ultra program from a cosmic standpoint not just a fractal down from human beings doing it it's cosmic ladies and gentlemen but let's keep going this 31 is not just any number it's the 11th prime number prime numbers are standalone they're so important so powerful if you don't know what a prime number is pause this video go type in prime number into your favorite search engine and read about it educate yourself on it they're powerful standalone numbers and the 31 is the 11th prime and we have just another big connection here so the biological machine that we are, the biological system that we are as a human being contains the main component that runs it all, which is what MK Ultra was all about, trying to tap into the brain, hack the brain, control the brain through whatever means necessary. So the science of numbers connected with mathematics gives us the outlook here on what it means to be a human being. So going a little bit further, bringing some alchemy into this to tie into mathematics and our numerology, we get this element gallium, the 31st element, and we get the element sodium. This element sodium is going to be probably the star of this presentation. The sodium element is rep representing our brains. We have sodium in our body, sodium chloride. If you go get a drip from being hung over, you're going to have a saline in there, which is going to have sodium. You have sodium, you have salt in the battery. We are batteries, etc., etc. So we have gallium and sodium tied together here. And when we, when we do the alchemy of uh, gallium and sodium, we're going to get this element right here in the very middle, the biggest one, uranium. Because if you take 69.723 and you add 22.990, if you just get out your calculator, simple math, you're going to get 92.713. 713 on the back end is going to be a permutation of the 137, which is the 33rd prime number. But it's going to be these two elements right here that are in bed together. It's uranium, it's Uranus, tied to Uranus, tied to Anu and the Inki and Enlil stories, tied to the Greek mythology and Father Sky, mating with Gaia in that mythology. And this letter U is what a magnet looks like. And then the, the little daughter, if you will, of uranium is Niobium. Remember in the Matrix, Niobe? Anyway, Niobium has... An atomic weight or a mass of 92 uranium's got 92 protons so these are essentially in bed together and they're tied to i mean running our reality and i'm going to show that and support that keep moving forward ladies and gentlemen so let's keep moving forward here let's get into this guy right here who matches with his name numerology to these two elements alan welsh dulls Foster. This guy right here, his name numerology is a 92. And the 92 matches uranium and it matches the weight of niobium, the 41st element. I'm going to get into that. How about that? This guy. And who is this guy? Well, this guy right there, he was the actual founder or he led up the MK Ultra program right here. I'm just going to go and show you this right here. So it's going to be Sydney. Okay, Sydney was the 
project m manager or he leaded it up, but it was the order of the CIA director, Alan Dole. So Alan Dole's big time job on the world stage. He was the head of the CIA. The head, the chief, the commander. Was his mind his own? Well, again, I, absolutely not. He's being mind controlled. These are just fractals. And you can see with his name numerology. Now, I want to be very transparent because some of you are going to look at his name. And you're like, how did you get Foster at the end here? Because when you go look at his, his, uh, his breakdown, anytime you can add in the mother's maiden name, you want to do that. So his mother, Edith, her, her knee name, it's called, it's the maiden name, is Foster. So he's born as... Alan Welsh Dulles, which is going to give you another uh, numerology output. But when you add in his mother's maiden name coming, this is what his mother and father is that formed him. And there's so many ways using numerology to look at this, but anytime you can add in your, and you should all be doing this with your name, numerology is adding in your mother's maiden name to get another outcome. So this is what brought you into this world. Two people coming together. And there's the 92. This guy's life was not as he was. This guy was born to be the head of the CIA. He incarnated to be the head of the CIA, and he incarnated to actually lead up the MK Ultra program. His life was completely a screenplay. It was a script. His mind was not his own. Absolutely not. Does he? He doesn't get a hall pass. This should this should ease a lot of your burdens, ladies and gentlemen, because it's all an even playing field here. You just may not have the same position as this these people. But they don't get a hall pass. They're all being used, just like you and I. So let's get into the next topic now. Call me Al, because that's his name, Alan. And whenever you see the Al, if you start looking for this, Alan, Al, go check out my Illumination Decoded. The Al tied to aluminium, the 13th element tied to the celestial bodies, which leans luminary, coming down here to play the game. Well, that's what, exactly what this guy's all about. And it just doesn't get any more apparent with this breakdown for this guy right here, who was the head of the CIA, who started the MK Ultra program with Sydney. Look at his birthday. He was born on April 7th, 47, tetragrammaton, silver, tied to duality. But the card that represents April 7th is the Ace of Spades, the 40th card in the deck. And just like that, why I have the skull there in the middle? Because it's tied to Westworld. I broke down Westworld. Westworld's all about being mind controlled. It's what the whole entire show is all about. The, the, the movie, the movie in 1973 from Michael Critchin's book or his screenplay. That started it all off. That to me has the seniority over Westworld's HBO, but they did a great job. That show's amazing. But you go watch the movie. It was about going down and playing out the game, a, a different game where you, there's no rules. You can go kill, you can do this, but it's not real. That's what the Westworld story is all based upon. So I, that's, that's exactly how I feel this real, our reality is not real. Whatever, and it's real to us, but whatever's watching us, it's not real. Like when you turn on a movie, it's not real, but you still get emotionally involved with it. So here's the date in the card that's tied to the MK Ultra program itself and when it began. On April 13th, of course, there's the 413. It's a permutation of pi. 1953, 53 is tied to iodine and the IM. 19 is tied to the sun. You got to look at all these subtleties because these are all telling us the story here if you're willing to pay attention. So it's this card right here that's tied to the uh, formation date or the, the, uh, the beginning date of MKUltra. It's the eight of diamonds, card 34. So I want to look and see how important this card is. And you know, the number eight is tied to the sun. 19 is the eighth prime number. This is tied to the sun. Sun has a heavy say in all this, along with the moon. But this eight of diamonds, I'm going to go to the chart here in just a second. But what's so fascinating is the word thought equals 34. The word thought equals 34. And the, this, this, the starting date of MK Ultra, which is all about the brain and thinking and trying to control the minds of people through whatever they can necessary, torture and drugs and hallucinogens. And it's tied to the 34th card in the deck. So you think, ladies and gentlemen, that we're living on a scripted reality? You think I'm just, or you think I'm just trying to fit a square peg in a round hole here? But going a little bit further, here's the charts for the cards of illumination. The basic charts, 
you should have these charts as a little bit of a variation a little graphically anyway not the cards are the same so if you're new to the cards just try to follow along as best you can if you're a returning subscriber and you know the cards this should be pretty easy for you but i want to extend upon this these charts this on the right side is the ego yeah and your card's going to be in here and you're going to be tied to a planet on longitudinally and latitudinally you're going to have and there's this is like a bingo chart and then this right here is called your the spirit side that i call it the handler what runs the ego card so all we got to do is we find the eight of diamonds there it is the formation of the, the mk ultra program the eight of diamonds and then just come over here to the same exact side here or the the same exact space and we locate the card that's going to be running or handling the eight of diamonds is the queen of spades the queen the queen runs it and th this is card 51 and this is card 34. so if we bring alchemy into that bam this is what we get now we get the moon involved so the eight of diamonds tied to selenium and the moon the queen of spades tied to antimony the 51st element these two cards are in bed together directly make no mistake about it you can bring alchemy into this and this is how the cards work they're so valuable here so let's get into a little bit more of what i just showed you let's get into the next topic now called the salt moon the salt moon and let's start off with breaking down mk ultra i'm going to break this down several different ways let's start here mk ultra being that 22 and that's the master builder number in numerology 22 and if you follow the medicine cards, it's the beaver. The beaver's the master builder. But nonetheless, it's tied to gold because 79 is the 22nd prime number and 79 is gold. So our minds are gold because this is what transmutes the energy as the feedback as we're being role played. Our brains. And we have the right and left hemisphere of our brains, which is going to give you the 69 here. The yin yang, our brains. So we go a little bit further right here and we realize that the brain is 11 and MK Ultra is the 22. Where do we go from there? Well, just like that, we're going to get it into sodium. So we have the salt and we're going to get the moon here in a minute. But I told you this is going to be the star of the presentation because this is what's linked directly to our brains. And remember, in a battery of the salt bridge, it's necessary. Inside your car battery, there's water and there's salt in there. Not exactly the way it works in our body, but our bodies are batteries. And this sodium right here is the, the 11th element, and it's tied to the word brain, as I showed, and MK Ultra is to 122, tied to the weight of sodium. And if you take the 11 and you add it to the 22, it's going to give you 33. 33. And if you take this right here, 22.990 and you round it up like science is going to tell you to do because this right here is called isotope 23 and just like that we now have a connection to the pineal gland in our brain no accidents here all in the same exact numerology cipher not jumping around it's easy to add other ciphers and get connections but that waters your results down not saying you can't do it but but here's where we bring in the moon and this element selenium remember that the operation of mk ultra started on the eight of diamonds day and that's the 34th card in the deck and there's the 34th element selenium and so we have sodium and selenium the 11 and the 34 and the reason why i'm showing the selenium and the sodium together is because they're tied to the brain and tied to the formation date of MK Ultra, or the starting point of MK Ultra, selenium. Now, I also want to digress. Notice the weight of selenium, 79. This is the most abundant. 79 is the 22nd prime number. MK Ultra is 22. So we have the 22 on sodium, and then we have the 79 on selenium, and there it is, the 79 being the 22nd prime number. This is big right here. And you should be doing this with your decoding, taking the number, if it's a prime, trying to connect it to uh, two alchemical elements, adding them up. And I'm going to show you why it's so important, because it shows the narration of how our reality works. So going further, we're going to do that. Let's do the alchemy of sodium and selenium. That's tied to MKUltra. 
and the 79 and the 22. And this is gold now. Our brains are gold being used for energetic gold currency. The Greeks called it ambrosia, food for the gods. And when we go over to the trusty calculator and we add up selenium and sodium, you're going to get 102.907. Keeping your eyes right here. Just like that, we have the 45th element called rhodium. And some of you should have bells going off like your jaw on the floor because you know what the 45 means. Rhodium, the RH, perhaps tied to the RH factors in some of the blood types out there, a lot of them. But this 45 and rhodium is tied to mind control because mind control is 45. So think about what I'm showing you here, ladies and gentlemen. That's sodium and selenium. And selenium is comes from the Greek word selene, which means moon. And in Vedic astrology, moon is the most dominant celestial body. It's the most important. It runs your emotions, the way you think, the way you kind of move around with your thoughts. This is how important this is right here. And this 45 is tied to mind control. So when we do the alchemy of selenium and sodium, we get 102. 102 is tied to the 45th element. Rhodium being 45 is tied to mind control. And then we get into this big word right here that a lot of you are going to maybe be shivering right now at because am I possessed? Yeah, I'm going to say you are. We're all possessed. Possession. Now, when you think possession, you think, you know, like a demon possessing you. And see, that's just, I don't think it works that way. It's a sliding scale. You have the angel and the demon, one on both sides of, one on each side of your shoulder, whispering in your ear to do this and do that. And throughout your life, you're going to do both. Throughout your life, you're going to be, you're going to do both. And you're going to be dominant in one area, the majority of you. But it's all about this possession. And this rhodium is a big dead giveaway. Its name is derived from the Greek word rhodon, which means rose colored. And now you get into the secret society, the 17th century, I think, secret society called the Rosicrucians. And the Rosicrucians were all wrapped around this rose that gives the bees honey. Now, I don't know if they're tying it to rhodium, but clearly the Royal Society of Chemistry is. That's where I got this from. So what is the rose that gives the bees honey and what are the bees? And what's the rose? Well, it's our mind. Our mind is the rose. What are the bees? The bees are the angels and demons that are possessing mankind, remote controlling people. That's what I say. That's what this says right here. But going a little bit further, ladies and gentlemen, when you do the sodium and selenium and you add up the protons, we did the weights now and they get 102. And of course, you know, the protons being in line with the weights, you're going to get 45. 34 plus 11 is 45. So not only you get the 102, that's pretty easy though. You're going to see a lot of that. But now we get into Pandora's box. And now we get into some Greek mythology. Is it, is it really a myth? See, I say that we're in, you're in Pandora's box. When you incarnated, when you get birthed into this world, you instantly and automatically got put into Pandora's box, the shitstorm. And then you're being used like a puppet on strings. You're being mind controlled. And the moon has a lot to do with it because selene, selenium is tied to the Greek word selene, which means moon. And in, again, if you're a fan of the astrology, Vedic astrology, the moon is the most, I they say it's the most important planet. Runs your emotions, the way you perceive reality and move with your thoughts. And sodium is the brain. These are no, this, as I, no pun on words, this, this is no brainer stuff now with all this. You can see the connecting points. So I got into some Truman Show. This was more support for this. Being a scripted reality, we're inside of a movie, we're being controlled, mind control, possession, all that stuff. Selenium and sodium, when you do the numerology, it gives the 57. And just like that, we get the Truman Show being 57. And what's so fascinating about this right here, this 57, is this right here. Bam! I just found this today, this morning. Around 57 degrees Fahrenheit is the average temperature on Earth. How about that? 57 degrees is the average temp on Earth. And just like that, I mean, the, the producers, the writers, did they know this information? Maybe. But I mean, you know, were they sitting down with Chaldean numerology to make sure this turns out this way? Maybe. And then you bring alchemy into it, ladies and gentlemen, and now just like that, you get the all-seeing eye. 
because it's this element lanthanum, which means to lie hidden. There's the 138. If you like, big shout out to Jason Brashears in the Archaics channel. The 138, the Phoenix Rising, it's all right there with this lanthanum element. And it's this right here is the icon used by the Royal Society of Chemistry giving us the clue. It's the lens of a camera. So the Truman Show is tied to the all-seeing eye, which obviously they're telling you is going to be tied to Sirius. There was a big mainstay in the movie with Sirius, which just may be the eye in the sky that's running over this entire reality. Well, these are all dead giveaways. I mean, what are the odds that the average temperature on Earth is 57 and the Truman Show is 57 and Lanthanum, the element to lie hidden, is 57 and it's got a little all-seeing eye with a camera on there? <laughs> what are the odds of that? And then it's tied to selenium and sodium, which is tied to mind control and our blood types through the RH factors. If you have that, if you don't have that, it doesn't mean you're going to be exempt for what I'm showing you here. These are just bridges and clues here, ladies and gentlemen. So we're all living out the Truman Show. This is all a big movie and a screenplay. Now, of course, they, the movie says you can break free from that, but I haven't found out way how to do that just yet because I'm still looking at my life and still showing the script playing out. So really, it comes down to this MK Ultra here. And I mean, is this what we're all living out? Is our entire reality an MK Ultra program? Well, when you do the alchemology of it, MK Ultra, to go as deep as I possibly can, alchemology is taking numerology, taking the letters and the numbers that you get for the outcomes and then tying it to alchemy, matching them up. So MK is 42, beryllium and helium, et cetera, et cetera. Going over to the trusty calculator and you get that 45, just to make sure it's really tight because 22 is tied to titanium, which its average is 47. So the really tight way to look at this, it's 45. And that's, you know, go back to here. I mean, are we just all fallen angels? We're part of the offspring of that. And once you're born into this reality, you're under the guise of mind control. It's a sly, I say it's a sliding scale. It's just the way it looks at this point, at this stage of the game. So going a little bit further with this MK Ultra, how about the tarot to get the picture? What does MK Ultra mean through the tarot? Well, it's a 22 and in the tarot, here is one representation of the 22. It's the Fool card. Now, the Fool card can be used as zero and the 22. Now, if you go to the spreads of the tarot and you look at here is the Fool being zero and 22. There's the zero position. This is the most popular spread, but there's the 22nd position. But if you remove this Fool card, then the Ace of Wands moves in its place. And then you don't have 78 cards, you have 77. And I'm going to show the variation between the two, but... Obviously, the, the comedy, I think, is MK Ultra being mind control, and you're a fool. You don't even, and let's see, ladies and gentlemen, when you, when you look at the MK Ultra program, and then if you knew you were going to go with put in, get put into a room and being fed a bunch of drugs and whatever, you'd be resisting, right? If you knew if you were coherent, but if you didn't know that you're being mind controlled, you'd just be a fool. You'd be this character right here. La di da di da. They're not a care in the world. Don't even know what's going on. This is how I say our reality is. It's not man running it. It's energies outside of this. And I'm going to support that a little bit more going further here. I'm going to bring in some theology from the Hinduism text. But if we decide to move the fool out of the 22nd position and move the ace of wands, as I suggested, because these cards are sliding. So this card can be 22 or 23. And it doesn't matter because 23 is going to be tied to the pineal. But the ace of wands right here becomes the 22nd card. And the ace of wands came from the ace of clubs these came first and it's the 14th card in the deck and just like that ladies and gentlemen you see these wands mean the mind it's an air suit this is an air suit we think we use air it's the element of air and it's the mind right here this is kind of you know pretty undeniable if you ask me and then you know this mind being 14 is also a match to the god so are we just the G-O-D? A lot of people think. I mean, in Hinduism, they say we're all incarnations of God. Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, you can't leave. These are all different layers that you can get into. Whatever, pick your, whatever religious text, Mazda, Allah. It's, to me, it's all the same. It's just going to be a different story told a different way, but 
It's all a big Ponzi scheme as far as I'm concerned. But nonetheless, how about this right here? When you say the Ace of Clubs, which is tied to the mind, and if you know what they, this is, this means the start of the mind now, it's a 41 and just like that. And we now get into some theology and we get into the most popular spell book on the world stage, the Holy Bible. And this word right here taken right from the Hebrew, right from the origins of where this word came from, the numerology of it from the Hebrew language, this is the Elohim. And this is getting into Genesis. Let us make man in our image and in our likeness, plural. It's not singular, it's plural through the context of that ancient text. If you follow it, 41. So let's talk about this a little bit. The Elohim. Elohim being 41, and just like that, we tie it to the element that we already showed with the uranium and mind control and Alan Dulles, who had a numerology of 92. And this is the icon that's representing niobium. It's the pentagram. It's man. It's us. And when you bring mathematics into this, bringing into the string of the golden ratio, the golden ratio representing light, the starting point and the fire coming down and nature, the measurement of nature. Well, if you go 41 digits into the string of the golden ratio, you can do this with pi as well. Adding in the one point as part of this equation, it gives you 200. And what is the story in the Holy Bible that talks about the 200? It's the fallen angels. So now we have a connecting point between the Elohim who supposedly made mankind and the fallen angel story. Are they just one and the same through these stories, these allegorical representations, whatever that looks like? Well, going further, what does this 200 mean? Well, it's tied to this element right here called Mercury. Remember Sydney, the guy who created MK Ultra, or what was behind it? Look at what age he died at, 80. Not an accident. So you got to look at all these subtleties. All part of the script, all part of the screenplay. Mercury being 23, tied to the word pineal. Even the, even the word moon equals 23. Mercury being the planet of communication. What would have to communicate? What would, it, what would it have to communicate to us? Well, it would go through the element Mercury. And Mercury is the best friend of the sun. So we have a celestial body connected to that as well. And, you know, even Mercury, the most abundant weight is 201. And you get into the Pope. <laughs> if you're interested, that, that, that's what it's tied to, Mercury. That's what it's tied to. But nonetheless, how about this right here? How about this character? The most iconic, most probably most famous character on the world stage. Here's an illustration of the Jesus Christ superstar. And a big shout out to Jill Rowland, fellow decoder. She pointed this out. And this was a big gem for me to find is she's like, you know, the, the letter U in sign language is when you put your two fingers together. And isn't that exactly what the Christ is doing right there? I say, absolutely. And this was, this was it for me. I knew because I, I just started to break this stuff down. You see, Jesus Christ, is he a time traveler? 479 in the primes, 479 is the 92nd prime number. And I mean, Jesus said, I am the offspring of David. Here it is in the Greek from the original text to where it came from in the New Testament. So you want to try to always use the numerology of the original word of where it came from because it's going to have the most merit. David's going to be 16 in the Chaldean, which is going to be tied to the word light. So Jesus is the offspring of light. David is going to be tied to light, but it's also going to be tied to the Elohim because Elohim is 41. And then it's going to be tied to uranium. How about Uranus, Father Sky? Anu, the father of Enki and Enlil? So the origins of this right here are massively important and what it means to have mind control for all of us. And then obviously he's pointing to the heart and that's this is their element, tellurium, and it comes from the word telus, meaning earth. So it means magnetic earth. That's what this means, magnetic earth. And he says, no one gets to the Father except through me. Well, now you have a pretty big clue what the Father is. Might just be Uranus. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, moving a little bit forward, here's kind of a, a recap of the Elohim, the 41. Remember, David is 41. Jesus saying he's the offspring. Jesus saying he's the offspring of the Elohim. And Elohim being 41, 
Niobium's the 41st element. The pentagram is what they use to represent Niobium, kind of a match to the five-pointed star in mankind with the pentagram. And then Niobium in Greek, where this word came from, there it is, 23, and just like that, we have pineal gland. And remember, we also have Mercury as well. You know, the communicator. And then Moon's in there as well. Moon's gonna be 23. Tied to our brains, folks. So, supernatural, running this reality remotely, absolutely, in my book, this is support. And again, just to recap, this guy who was the founder of the MKUltra program, the CIA director, Alan Welsh Dulles Foster, 92. So dead, these are, this is obviously dead giveaways to the Elohim. So what do you think was running this guy's brain? <laughs> it's connected to the old, it's connected to the Old Testament. Now you get into Judaism. Not, you're not going to get into Christianity. Christianity is going to come after, but Christianity is Judaism. It's just, you can't have one without the other. Old Testament, New Testament, they go hand in hand, two sides of the same coin. There it is. Bam! Just like that, ladies and gentlemen. You got to be the judge of what you see there, but let's get into some Hinduism now. Because I show a lot of biblical stuff. Holy Bible is the most popular book on the world stage, but what about the Bhagavad Gita and the, the Vedas and the Upani, uh, Upanishads? and the, the Hinduism religion, as a matter of fact, if you do your research, I'm not saying it's absolute, but according to the research, Hinduism is the oldest known text besides uh, ancient Egypt. Hinduism, it's older than Christianity. Does it mean it has seniority? No, but I'm gonna show you that this is exactly the same story as the Elohim just packaged differently. And here it is. So the illustration on your left are the divas, the good guys, the angels, and then on the right, the asuras. Those are the demons. It's good cop, bad cop. There's always a duality in these stories. And it's 16 and 13. Remember, David is 16. Jesus said, I'm the offspring of David. Jesus was an offspring of the divas in Hinduism. And the 16 and 13, what does that mean? Well, it means the light game. That's what it means. So if you're an avatar, if you're up in wherever the spiritual realm is, you're up in the cosmos and you decide you look down at the game in earth and you're like, hey, that, that game looks pretty fun. I want to go play. Well, now you, you got to be, you know, you got to start to use the ego and the identity. And you get the creation of this. And the fallen angel stories there. This is not even the same, but the same exact situation. It's the light game that we're all playing out. If you believe you're a light worker, like Hugh, man, Hugh is light. But going a little bit further, here are the uh, leaders of each side. And this was massive. Saying their side of the story. Beyond the Holy Bible in the text that you, uh, that, you know, Judaism and Christianity. Hinduism says that the divas and the suras, they are the, the deities, the demigods, the gods, etc., etc. And it's Varuna leading up the divas, the good guys. And then it's Vritra leading up the asura and the, the, the egoic. And you know, notice that the, the leader of the Asuras is a 16 matching the Diva. And again, ladies and gentlemen, it's like if you're up in heaven, let's just use that as an analogy, and you look down, you want to play the game, and you want to come down here, well, you may not have to. Maybe you can do it remote controlly, through remote control. We can't leave all these things out and say, well, they're not possibilities. They're absolutely possibilities. But this is a dead giveaway. The leaders of each side, 21 and 16, big time dead giveaways. Because if we add them up, 21 and 16, we get rubidium, and there it is, ladies and gentlemen. We now go to the all-seeing eye. This element, rubidium, 37, 37 tied to the words eye in the sky. So, you know, let me just show you through numerology, just so we can be very, very uh, eye in the sky. 37, just tied to this. Shepherd, 37, you see? Eye in the sky. I mean, why is there an eye on here? I mean, did the Royal Society of Chemistry, they're going to say this is used for photo cells. But why, you know, why is there an eye there? Well, obviously through numerology, combining it with alchemy 37 and the two leaders that lead each side, the divas and the asuras is 37. Say it isn't so. <laughs> but wait, there's more. 21 and 16. And there you have it. Just like that. We get the connecting point of how our brains work. And if you just go down to the fractal of your brain, 
and you being remotely controlled by energies outside this reality, these are the two emotions that we give off as a human being. Everything's going to be subordinate underneath these two main emotions, love and fear. And if you just look at what this is saying, the divas are the good guys, love. And the asuras are the egoic ones, and they represent fear. Not having enough, not thinking they're good. Enough. It's, if you look at what fear is wrapped around, fear is a massive control in this reality. It's, it controls this reality way more than love does. People act on fear way more than they do in love. Love gets people complacent, gets lazy, but not fear. It makes you move. And if you just take away the aspect of what fear means, it means your ego, the identity. It's necessary for this reality to take place. It's the desire. Desire, demon, identity. See how all this works out? And what happens is, is it gives and paves way to the sodium, which is in our brains and our bodies. Sodium, as you know, represents MK Ultra. MK Ultra being 22. Where's this 21 and 16 tying to sodium come into play? Well, just like that, we look at the boiling point of sodium. See, these are the clues. I showed this once before, but this now is absolutely 100% of my book now. Sodium represents the brain. Here's the boiling point of sodium, 1621.292 Fahrenheit. There's the 16 and 21. Now you say, well, what does that mean? Well, ladies and gentlemen, just look at alchemy and the transmutation of things. What happens when a water boils? It turns to a vapor. Well, if you take that same construct and you put it into our minds, and here is the boiling, our thoughts, they turn into vapors. And our thoughts become things. They go out into the, the world. They are being harnessed. So the boiling point of sodium to me means the transmutation of our love and fear emotions. And they feed these two right here, the divas and the asuras. That's exactly how I think this reality works. Through this context right here, if you follow the, you know, the, the other ones, the Elohim, same thing. Just different text put down in a different way. This to me is absolutely how it works. Absolutely how it works. So again, the question I'm going to pose to all of you is, are you in control of your mind? After everything I've showed you now, and these stories, there are a lot of them are allegorical, of course, but think about what I'm showing you here. Are you in control of your mind? Well, let's keep going now and get into the last topic for this presentation. Well, kind of what it's all about, the M and the K, which is going to give you 13 and 11. If you follow that through the English, which is going to give you 24 times, 24 is tied to chromium and that's tied to chroma and, and, you know, being a human being. But what I thought was really interesting is taking a different look. We showed the sodium, but we also can take a look at this element right here, titanium. And now we get into the, this, this element means the titans and the fallen angel stories, titanium. Titanium being 47. 47 is its average atomic mass. And remember, we go, to, uh, we go to Alan and his birthday, April 7th, 47. Folks, you think that's an accident? You think they're putting this there to mock you? To try to screw you over or get one past you? This guy, well, come on, folks. He's being mind controlled. I mean, you can clearly see MKUltra 22, 47. It's right there. And the Titans. And this is a great, this is uh, Judas Priest, Sad Wings of Destiny, amazing graphic off their amazing album. So, you know, the depiction of the Fallen Angel story got probably Neptune wrapped around his neck, coming down into the sea of space, being mind controlled. All of us being mind controlled. MK Ultra program still exists today, it's through the Celestials. But there it is, the sodium again in the brain. Pretty much a dead giveaway to recap on that. How about this one right here? The brain being 11. And then it's tied to this element right here. Going deeper and down the hole of alchemy, we get boron. Boron has an average rate of 10.81, uh, but it's going to round up to 11. This is its most abundant. There's the 9-11 there, the permutation of that. Five means man. Five means man. Remember, Ni niobium's 41. You add that up, it's five. I mean, the five is the middle of your dial pad or the calculator. So it's right in the middle. If you put a pyramid over the middle of your dial pad, the number five is the apex of the pyramid. It gets all the energy. 
Five is the move, the move, the very busy number. Those of you that have five life paths, the adventurer, the ones that want to get out and experience life in all its totality, the majority of you five life paths, but the pentagram being the 33 tied to the Christ, remember 18 equals 33, Jesus is 18. So easy to see this stuff when you get all the tools, but then you get into the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and this 42, MK being 42. We have a connection point to Douglas Adams in his book, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. The BBC did a thing on it. I mean, just goes on and on. And this 42, of course, tied to Jupiter symbol. Has a lot to do with all this. But it's tied to this element right here. So MK Ultra, mind control is tied to molybdenum. And molybdenum means lead. And what do you think the human being is? What we are? Lead. And then the thoughts that we give off, they're gold led to gold this this right here is the uh, transmission station the brain and then 22 is 42 you see so you can see why they call it why it was called mk ultra tied to molybdenum and there's the 95 twice 95 is the one half of the i am so when you bring this 42 into the mix of things tied to Douglas Adams and Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, you go back to the divas and the asuras, the Elohim, the angels and the demons. There it is, 42. 42. The word adversary equals 25. It's pretty easy to see. Star card is the angel. I mean, it's just so easy to see all this stuff when you have all these components. And then you have the I am. Molybdenum having an average rate of 95. We tie it to Americium. And we have the I am. Remember when you add up uh, the I am, you get 369. The keys to the universe, you're going to get tied to the life is but a dream. <laughs> you know? So all this stuff is here. Kind of coming to a head now. And then how about if you say molybdenum? 41. Remember what that 41 is tied to? It's tied to the Elohim and the let, let us make man in our image. And there it is, Elohim. 41. 41's the 13th prime number. Remember the word game is 13. Remember that the Asuras is 13. Okay? The ones that supposedly broke off and wanted to come down and play the game from the divas. Stop being a diva and be a Suda. And then you get the watchers and there's the, the good and the bad of the watchers as well. 13 is tied to aluminium and alum, uh, illumination. But the Elohim let us make man in our image tied to molybdenum. So we become molybdenum, we become lead, obviously. And then the, then the game is lead to gold. Check out my lead to gold decoded. It's a game that we're playing, folks. You're part of a game, you're part of an experiment. You ain't in control of it, I'm not in control of it. Just along for the ride. That's why decoding yourself is the most important thing. How about this guy right here, Carl Wilhelm Scheel. This guy right here. A big time uh, avatar, man. Boy, the incarnation he got. Look at what he discovered. He discovered oxygen, 21% of the air that we breathe, oxygen, molybdenum, manganese, the 25th element, barium tied to 56 in lights, camera, action, chlorine tied to the maybe our originations of our blood type, number 17, and then tungsten, the wolf, element number 74, big time elements this guy discovered. What he got to discover, how did he, why did he earn that? Maybe, maybe he'd leveled up in his past life, who knows? And this, this word, Carl, so interesting. Remember Jim Carrey and Yes Man? His name was Carl. You'll start to see that word, Carl. And Yes Man is Yeshua Man, Jesus Man. He's having the Jesus Christ Superstar experience. All of us are. And he, he discovered molybdenum, this guy right here. Look at his born day, 9th of December. And what's his card? <laughs> So here's the guy who found molybdenum, <laughs> discovered it, <laughs> and his birth card is the nine of clubs, <laughs> which is card 22. <laughs> I mean, do you think they had the MK Ultra program back then in 1742? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the MK Ultra program still exists today, not in human form, but in celestial form. Mankind is being used, folks. We're being mind controlled. Just got to have fun with it. <laughs> but there it was right there is the nine of clubs. Pretty, pretty much a dead giveaway. And then um, his birthday, another dead giveaway, nine of December, nine one two, permutation of the 129, tellurium being the prison planet. <laughs> 
And even um, when you look at uh, Dole's, when he died, died on January 29th, that's a permutation, that's the 129, you see? There it is, the 129 prison planet. See, if it's inescapable, folks. Do we ever get out of this game? Well, if you watch the great show on Netflix called Dark, well, a lot of these shows, you never get out. You just incarnate into a different body. And I say, if that's the case, if that's the truth, well, maybe we just have, we're able to level up. And that's the name of the game with some of the free will we have. Leveling up to get a different avatar next game, a better one. Well, I would be checking things off the list if that was the case. But anyway, how about this guy right here? So we showed the guy who discovered uh, molybdenum. How about the guy who first isolated it? <laughs> Peter Jacob Helm. <laughs> he was born on the 2nd of October, or otherwise written 102. His full numerology is 56, which is tied to <laughs> lights, camera, action. <laughs> But how about his birthday, the 2nd of October? Bam! And we go right back to mind control. There's the 102. It's right in his birthday, 102, 201. 201 is tied to Mercury. Remember the Pope staying in resident uh, 201? <laughs> Think the Pope's getting a hall pass on being mind controlled? Absolutely not. <laughs> it's just all a big experiment, this whole reality called life. <laughs> mind control. Pandora's box. Peter Jacob Helm, the guy who first isolated Molybdenum 56. And just to kind of give the comedy at the very end of this, going back to Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And what was the supercomputer that all the people asked for the secret of the universe? What is the big question? What is life, the universe, everything? It's the movie. The answer. It's the movie. You're in a movie. That's, that's the answer to life. That's 42. You're in a movie and you're being mind controlled. That's the secret, folks. And now there are no more secrets. <laughs> I mean, Deep is 22, MK Ultra 22, Thought is 34. MK Ultra started on the Eight of Diamonds Day, which is card 34, which means moon tied to selenium. So is it just Earth and the moon having a, a symbiotic relationship and the moon is the mind of Earth? <laughs> All I know, ladies and gentlemen, is we live inside of a movie. We live in a Truman Show, and our minds are not our own. Certainly, Peter Jacob Helm, he may have isolated molybdenum, and certainly um, Carl Wilhelm Scheel had one hell of an avatar, one hell of a life, discovering these elements. Pretty big pants to wear, but no one gets a hall pass. And this guy having <laughs> the Knight of Clubs card as his birth card. Come on, folks. MK Ultra has been around for the existence of mankind. They just coined it. MKUltra means the cosmos doing mind control. And it's all wrapped around being in the movie. That's what this whole thing means. So again, ladies and gentlemen, the last time I'm gonna ask you, <clears throat> after everything you've seen, are you in control of your mind? Are you in control of your mind? So ladies and gentlemen, that was my presentation for MKUltra. <laughs> I wanted to end this off kind of uh, laughing because this. Uh, you, what are we gonna do, get angry? We're gonna get mad at this information? Gotta have fun with it. Decode yourself, figure out what your part of the script is. Turn off the mainstream. That's their movie. You're just an extra in that movie. Turn on your movie. I think the age of Aquarius is knowing I don't know thyself, realizing that you're attached to, maybe you have a spirit guide that you're attached to that's running your reality. If you once you wanna know what that is, what that spirit guide is. If that's the case, I would. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we'd love to hear what you saw during this presentation. Keep your comments coming. Just keep them cordial, please. Don't be a dink with your comments. No toxicity. If you don't agree with me, totally fine. These are all, a lot of this stuff's theoretical here, even with the support I'm showing you. Some, someone's gonna come along and say, no, that's bullshit. Okay, well, what's your theory? And what do you gotta do to support it? I don't like opinions, opinions suck. Opinions with support suck a little bit less. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I got for today. My name is Logan. Until next time, we will see you later.